Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap of the March 2020 Chemnitz Dialogue live stream. It's a little weird to say recap because I haven't filmed the live stream yet. The live stream is actually going to take place tonight. But since my plan involving creating yarn inspired by my blooming cherry tree outside, well the photo from last year, but anyway, uh, since that's my plan, I decided I wanted to do some free hand painting on a sock blank. And I thought it would be useful to include in the recap uh, how I mixed the dyes and a little bit about the setup. And then you can go watch the live stream to see the actual painting itself. At least that's my plan. As you know, plans are always subject to change around here, but I like the vision in my head and we'll see how things come out. I do want to admit I am exhausted. The kids being home is hard. <laughs> it's really, really hard. Uh, virtual school started for Ryder today, which is awesome, but takes a lot of parental involvement. So we're still figuring everything's out, but I'm working really, really hard to find the silver lining in all of this and there's some moments that were really wonderful that I'm excited to share in the live stream tonight. So if you missed the live stream or you haven't watched the replay, go and check it out. Uh, you can go watch and even fast forward through the parts where I'm not doing anything. Uh, so yeah, you'll find a link in the video description. For this project we are going to use guar gum as a thickener for our dye colors and I am going to mix a half teaspoon of the guar gum in with one cup of warm water as our thickened stock. I used my magic bullet uh, to mix it up. The guar gum I'm using is food safe and then I will transfer it into a food safe container that I will then turn into something non-food safe. But I did this to make sure things were well mixed and we didn't have any clumps in our guar gum. Now we have a thickened paint. You can feel it and sort of see that it isn't going to drip in the same way. It sort of coats your fingers. If it's too thick then it won't go into the fiber really well. But this is a ratio that is a bit on the thick side but we might dilute with water as we're ready to paint as needed and so that's why we're starting with a slightly thicker stock. Three colors that I know I want to have thickened are a gray, a brown and a pink. The gray and brown I plan to mix together to get an appropriate bark color. I honestly am still a little unsure if I want a green, but if I do then maybe I will add some to the pink to sort of bring that reddish green in for the leaves. But for now I'm planning on focusing on the blossoms themselves and the tree. So I'm going to take this uh, guar gum mixture and non-specifically partition it for these three colors. And now I'm going to set these aside briefly, go and set things up so I can bring out some acid dyes and we're going to mix some acid dye powder into each of these colors. I think I do want a green. I'm going to think on that one for a minute, think about what I want to do, but uh, let's start here. Let's use some deep magenta, and I don't need a ton. I'm just taking a bit of a scoop, and then we're going to start stirring this in. I probably, I think I added a bit too much dye in here, but I can add it's probably about a third of a cup of water with the guar gum in there, and so I'm going to add just two tablespoons of water, which is going to make it a little less thick, but it should still be usable. All right, we'll check that color in a moment. Now, I do want the color to be a bit intense, but maybe not quite that intense, so we're going to take Uh, well, yeah, we'll take the same amount of our pecan brown, but we're also going to take a nice pinch of some silver gray. And so let's see 
how this comes out here. Might be a bit intense. <laughs> it might need more gray, but I can come in and I do have a liquid dye stock of some gray that I can add some to. In case it's not clear, I am wearing a respirator mask right now. Um, and safety glasses because we're dealing with a dry dye powder. But let's, that's actually, that color is actually pretty good. Um, I want it to lighten in patches, but uh, it's not bad. And let's look at our pink. That is a bit intense. Um, I'm going to want some of it lighter, uh, for sure, but I don't mind of it, some of it being so deep. So what I will probably do is off camera, make some more of the guar gum mixture and just have some plain. So that way I can easily dilute it with this stock during the live stream itself. So let's make a green. Okay, for the green, I want a little bit of some avocado. Avocado is a tricky color. Because see, this in here is not what we see, but like I've seen this color when I do stocks, it then breaks and we get more of that color. But this definitely feels very teal, uh, which isn't quite what we want. Um, I'm gonna add like a glob of pink. Huh, which kind of makes it a little more teal. Uh, let's find a yellow. We got some brilliant yellow in here. Let's see where this brings us. And the thing with today is I don't mind if we have some undissolved chunks. Uh, because I think that that could give us some fun variation. Now, as for, I did consider actually using, um, I considered using food coloring for the leaves and making a color that would sort of break into brown and green. But, so let's see where we are right now. It's not bad. Uh, not bad. Um, I think, I think I'm going to keep the green there. And again, we can, I like that intensity. We can dilute it a bit as well. So I'll have like a jar of some guar gum on hand so we can dilute our colors. But I think this is the palette that we're going to start with. And obviously, uh, none of these containers that I'm using now will ever be used for food ever again. But this allowed me to set up our color palette. Um, in advance of the dialogue, and so I can safely set these aside. Plans are always subject to change, especially when I'm going to be dying in a live stream. But my plan is to paint out the tree, whether it gets more abstract or not, we'll see as things go on in the moment when I see how the colors are performing together uh, for the, for the, the colorway. We'll see but I plan to pre-soak my blanks in some plain tap water with a big splash of vinegar and sort of unspecified and then yeah we'll paint and steam set and so now we'll take a look at the finished blanks. Let's unravel and wash and look at these blanks. I think this one is my painted cherry blossoms. Uh, so the blanks that I used are Knit Picks Hawthorne sock blanks. They are double-stranded sock blanks. And a question I got after the stream is, what is a sock blank? So a blank is a pre-knit or crochet 
piece of fabric that you dye and then unravel um, to knit or crochet or weave or whatever it is you want to do with it. And that is what we did here. Now, what makes these blanks special is that they are double stranded. So there are two 50 gram balls of Knit Picks Hawthorne knit together. So that way when this is unraveled, you will get two matched 50 gram balls of yarn. Uh, Hawthorne is 80% Superwash Fine Highland Wool, 20% Polyamid. Now, since I was giving that information, but look at how sharp these flowers still are. I hand painted, we mixed that guar gum, and I did dilute the pink and I diluted the brown and the green in some more guar gum, and then added the darker color to give like an accent and a pop. Um, when you take a blank or yarn painted with guar gum out, it might feel a little slimy, but that's because you haven't diluted it yet. Um, we can see, we're not seeing color bleeding. The dye did not react with the guar gum. Um, I am going to use a little bit of some warm water for the wash and some dish soap, um, but I'm not expecting there to be any bleeding. And in, that water is still very cold, uh, and in a moment we'll come and reveal the second blank that we did that was much more abstract. And don't worry, we'll be showing you the finished dry blanks at the very end. <laughs> I don't usually film the washing step for my live streams, but I always enjoy the reveal of a blank, and so that's why I wanted to share this. Now, in general, I don't use plastic wrap very much with my dyeing videos. I am much more likely to use, just put things in the steamer basket. The one time I still like having plastic wrap is when I'm painting something and I don't want any color transfer from different parts of the project, like if I'm doing a blank. If I was doing something more random with speckles or something and I didn't care if there was color transfer, then I might just put it straight in the steamer basket. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much the circumstance where I still use it. Um, and I try to show when I just put things straight in the basket. But this second blank was much more abstract. I still try to include some kind of gradient into it because I like doing that with blanks. But we've got these paint marks. And the thing about this that is so cool is since I was using the guar gum, see these square lines. If I didn't have guar gum and I was just using a paintbrush with the liquid dye, you would see more roundness, more of a bleed, more spread. And so the guar gum really does make the dye act much more like a paint, but it is still a dye. So you don't get any residue on the yarn. I mean, you have to wash it out and I don't recommend letting it dry on the yarn, but there's not that residue that you would have if you actually use paint. And so it just allows you to treat this like a literal painter's canvas versus you know, the metaphorical one. I, I guess it's not metaphorical because it's always a canvas. But anyway, um, I am going to finish washing this off camera. I'll use soap and everything like before. But then when you see me, we will see these dry. When the blanks were dry, I realized that I did not want to unravel them. Something about the creation of them gave me so much peace and I wanted to be able to add them to my shop intact and just leave that beauty as it is. But I realized that this meant that I wasn't gonna be unraveling a Hawthorne sock blank, and this is the first time I've used a Hawthorne sock blank. So with the leftover dyes and a paintbrush, I created a definitely not identical, but a similar type of colorway on another uh, blank of the Hawthorne sock yarn. Like the others, I steam set this, washed it, hung it up to dry, and I will definitely show it to you before we go and unravel it. Here are the two sock planks that we dyed in our live stream. I really, really, really love how they turned out. Uh, I'm not sure which one is my favorite, to be honest, if it's our paint strokes or the hand-painted cherry blossoms with the petals falling down and giving us this sort of blanket of blossoms on the ground. They are very, very different. 
um, but they used the same colors and they were both hand painted and so it was a lot of fun. I really can't bring myself to unravel either of the blanks that I created in the live stream. So for this recap, I created a third one. Uh, it is very, very similar to this one, although clearly I was brushing in the opposite direction with my gradient, um, but I think that a lot of the color progressions are similar. In the one in the live stream, we had some of those pastel colors left over, which we didn't over here, so this is a lot more pigmented overall. Um, and I think that that gradient that we might see is going to be a little more subtle here. You can sort of visualize how these color changes could take place with there being more of that brownish gray speckles and less of the green and vice versa. Uh, but anyway, I am going to go unravel this blank off camera. Um, I'll do it by hand and show you guys what it looks like on the Nitty Naughty. So that way I can give some finished thoughts on the Hawthorne sock blanks and how they perform. But in the meantime, I don't know, I'm really, really proud of myself. Here is the skein that I unraveled. We do absolutely have a gradient in here. You can see that we've got more green and we're getting more and more of that grayish brown color as we go through with pink speckles throughout. The, these splotches and speckles are pretty sharp because we used guar gum when creating this, um, but they aren't completely regular because our patches of color were very, very random. I also want to add that unraveling the Hawthorne blank was just as easy as any of the stroll double stranded blanks I unraveled. Uh, I do have an automated skein winder, which I could have used, but I wanted to show the subtle gradient effect that we got from the colorway. So one way I do like to unravel double stranded blanks is to use a two foot nitty naughty in the H configuration and I'll wind one half on one side, one half on the other. The perk of a double stranded sock blank is that you have two 50 gram skeins of yarn that are matched. So if you were to take one of these skeins and one of the 50 gram skeins from the other like paint stroke blank that I made, uh, they would not be identical. They would be similar, but the transition from the more green to the more brown wouldn't happen in the same place. So by doing it on one blank, you can get this consistency within the two skeins that you make from that one blank. As for the unraveled blank, there is one thing left to do. Uh, this is still going to be really crimped because I just frogged the blank. So I will take the skein and go soak it in some just plain tap water, let that crimp relax and hang it to dry. Um, that way the risks of getting things tangled are less risky. But you can knit or crochet directly from the blanks if you want to do some kind of two at a time project and I know a lot of people enjoy doing that. Now it is my favorite time in the Chemnitz Dye Along recap where I showcase some of the yarn that you dye inspired by the same inspiration photo, this photo of my cherry tree blooming in my backyard. Did you take a literal inspiration like I did and draw cherry blossoms or did you pull some of these colors to create skeins with a number of different techniques? Uh, some months people have blended fiber, people will do hand painting, immersion dyeing, natural dyeing, all kinds of things. And it's really, really fun to see how multiple sets of eyes will pull very different colorways or very similar colorways from one photo. Uh, if you'd like to be featured in future months, uh, you can share your photos with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue on Instagram or reply to the inspiration photo on my Facebook page with a photo comment of your yarn and so then I'll pick some to include in these recaps. So thank you everyone who submitted photos. Well, that's about it for March 2020. <laughs> what a March. Uh, I don't know if things are going to get any easier in the near future. There's so much uncertainty and it's really hard. I know I am trying to maintain some kind of normalcy to continue to play with yarn and color, washing your hands, maintaining social distancing, only going out in public if it's absolutely essential. Those things are all really, really important as well. Make sure that you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and have your notifications turned on so you don't miss a new video. I typically release the next dialogue inspiration photo around the 15th of the month and do a live stream shortly thereafter. I am still intending to do an April dialogue and live stream. How that's going to take shape, 
I don't know. Everything is always subject to change, uh, but I will do my best to keep you guys updated with how things are progressing. Anyway, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Again, wishing you all health, and I'm sending a lot of love. Uh, and I will chat with you all soon. Bye, everyone.